Welcome to Lesson 1-7, Day 1. Today we're going to talk about adding integers. Our objectives for today are I will be able to add integers and to solve problems adding integers. Alright, so some of the ground rules when it comes to adding integers. First and foremost, positive plus a positive will always equal a positive. So anytime you have a positive number plus a positive number, your answer should be a positive number. Next, a negative plus a negative will always give you a negative. Remember, these are just the ground rules for adding integers. So a negative plus a negative will give you a negative. So if the signs are the same, keep the sign. Last but not least, now this one is the complicated one, a negative plus a positive, or vice versa, the solution will take the sign of the number with the greater absolute value. And you will actually use subtraction to find this answer. Now I know that it gave you a spot to write these down in your notes, so please make sure to take the time and write them down so you can reference them later on in the lesson or when you're working on your practice work later on. These three rules are definitely going to help you when it comes to adding and subtracting integers. We'll talk more about rule three in a little bit, it'll start to make more sense once you practice with it. All right, so what this means here is I have four plus eight. Both of these numbers are positive numbers, so I know that my answer has to be a positive number. Now here, I have negative four plus a negative eight. So since it's a negative and a negative, I know my answer automatically is going to be negative. So when the signs are the same, you keep the sign. But now here I have a negative four and a positive eight. I know that my answer is going to be positive because eight is further away from zero than negative four is. So eight's absolute value is eight. Negative four's absolute value is four. So since eight is positive and has the larger absolute value, my answer is going to be positive. Now, if this is still a little confusing, that's okay. We're going to show you using a number line how this works. Now, in this case, I have negative eight and a positive four. Again, negative eight still has the higher absolute value. So the negative eight tells us that the answer is going to be negative because the eight is, has a larger absolute value than the four. Okay, so let's look at this using a number line. So when you use a number line, you always know that the plus sign means to move right, but then the minus sign means to move left. So a positive sign means move right, negative sign means move left. So I always start at my first number, so in this case I'm doing three plus five, so I start at three. The plus sign tells me to move to the right, and the five tells me I'm going to move to the right five places. So I move to the right five places. I end up at eight, so my answer is a positive eight because I ended up at positive eight. Now, in this case, I have a negative plus a negative. So this tells me to start at negative five. Okay, and then it tells me to move right but then it tells me to go left because I have the plus sign and then I have the negative sign. So I have plus, so move right. Now it says move left and I need to move left eight spaces. So I move left eight spaces. I end up at negative 13. So my answer to negative five plus a negative eight is negative 13. Now when you look at this, if you just do regular addition, because it's a negative and a negative, we can just say, well, eight plus five equals 13, but since they're both negatives, I know that my answer should be a negative 13. Right, so this is probably pretty simple for us. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move on, okay, and you can try these two problems on your own quickly. When you come back, we'll go over your answer. All right, so what we should have found here was that you start at the negative six. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. The plus sign tells me to move to the right, but then the minus sign tells me to move to the left. So I'm actually going to move to the left 
four spaces. So one, two, three, four, and I end up at negative ten. Again, I could just do six plus four is ten, and since it's both numbers are negative, my answer is negative. Same thing here. I'd start at a negative twelve. I'd add a negative two, so I'd end up going, this says go right. Oh, wait. Then they have the sign that says go left, so I go left two spaces, and I end up at a negative 14. All right, so now let's try this with our different sign numbers. So I have a positive 5 and a negative 3. So if I start at positive 5, I place my dot on the positive 5 on the number line. The addition sign tells me to move right but then the negative sign tells me, nope, just kidding, now you're going to move left. So I move left three spaces. I'm still on the positive side. And the reason I'm still on the positive side is because five is further away from zero than three is. So I don't have enough to actually get back to zero or past zero. So here, my five is my number with the greater absolute value. So therefore, I knew my answer had to be positive. And in this case, it was a positive two. Now, when we talk about sub using subtraction to solve this, if you look at these numbers, five plus a negative three. So because they are opposite signs, you can take the larger number, so ignore the signs, take the larger number, which in this case is five, subtract the three, and you get two. Now, because 5 is the number with the greater absolute value, you know your answer had to be a positive 2. Okay, so let's try this with this one. So now I have a positive 5 and a negative 2. So if I use the subtraction rule, I'm going to ignore the signs and do 5 minus 2, and I get 3. In this case, 5 is my number with the greater absolute value, so my answer should be a positive 3. Let's check this using a number line. I start at negative 2. The plus sign tells me to move right. There's nothing in between the plus sign and the 5, so I move right 5 spaces. I end up at the positive 3. And I know that says negative 3, I apologize. So that should be a positive 3. There we go. So let's try 4 plus a negative 3 and 5 plus a negative 7. I know that you don't have these in your workbook, but I'd like you to take out a separate sheet of paper and try them. And when you come back, we'll go over your answers. All right, so I'm just going to show you using subtraction how this problem should have come out. So I have 4 plus a negative 3. So I would ignore the signs, and I have 4 minus 3, and that gives me 1. Because negative 3 doesn't have the largest absolute value, f positive 4 actually does, our answer should be a positive 1. So if you start at positive 4 and go back, because it says plus, so go to the right, minus says go to the left, go to the left 3, so 1, 2, 3, we ended at a positive 1. Now for this problem, we have a negative 7 plus a positive 5. So what you do is you take the 7 and you subtract 5, ignore the signs, and you get 2. Because the negative 7 has a greater absolute value, your answer should be a negative 2. So we're going to try that on the number line. So we start at positive 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The plus sign says move right, but then the minus sign says move left, so we're going to move left 7 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we ended up at a negative 2. I know this is complicated, so don't worry. We will spend plenty of time with it in class in the next couple of days. So what I would like you to do for your post tonight, I would like you to post the answers to these four questions. One, what are the three rules for adding integers? Two, if two numbers have different signs, what operation do we end up using to solve the problem? And then three and four, I want you to try on your own. 
you can use the number line, but I also want you to practice. So I, what I'd like you to do is actually use the subtraction method and then use the number line to check your answer. As always, do your best, and if you have any questions, please make sure to post them to Edmodo so we can go over them in class tomorrow.